The cosmopolitan, stylish, and enthralling city of Barcelona in Spain is the first stop for the most talked about cash game in poker. The Casino Barcelona is buzzing with poker activity. The World Poker Tour is in town and they're on day three here in the main event just behind me with some big names still in. But should they drop, they'll be sure to head straight into the queue for poker's hottest ticket. A seat in the party poker big game. So far in the big game. There's a jerk here from Ivy Poker that won't do a straddle. The first guy that quietly tried to do it, quietly, didn't do it, he just like he just refused to do it. What a sort of nits are you producing? What are you doing? What's going on? There's no scammers here. What is this? You're a disgrace. You You're a cheat. And he's yeah, called up. That. And Torelli, he's just got the bad news. <laughs> Holy Toledo. And he's gone for, it looks like, about two grand. Wow. I think he put him on it. That's amazing. Torelli's getting old. The name of the player with the fewest votes who will have to leave the game right now is Alec Torelli. No worries. We're just a few hours in, so let's catch up on this game's winners and losers so far with your host, Jesse May. Biggest winner at the table, Scott Baumstein ahead 18,000 euros. Spaniard Balaga ahead 9K. For us, Jaka's clawed his way back in this, 2,200 ahead. Italian Pirate Max Pescatore ahead 900. Britt Toby Lewis winning a few shillings. Tony G losing now 2,000. Raul Mestre quit 8K down. And American Alec Torelli, the biggest loser at the table, voted off 21K behind. Jesse May joined by WPT Dublin winner Simon Deadman. And we've got a new player on the table filling the seat okay. the left by the evicted Alec Torelli. It's a recent UKIPT London champion, Spaniard Sergio Ida. This big game scheduled to run 12 hours. We've played three hours so far, so this pot is brewing. Everything. You are doing it or not? Yes. Everybody's doing it. Everyone's doing it. He doesn't have to do it. You don't have to do it. Maybe later. I'm doing 200 for him. <laughs> I'm doing the 200 one, so. Yeah, I prefer to, to start. Oh. OK, whenever you want to, yeah. Fine. Yeah, OK. We so. have time. <laughs> he got us. Oh. He bluffed us. He said, yes. He loves it. <laughs> he even got a guy to leave because of him. No, that was because of you. <laughs> no, he left because of you. No, because he didn't want to play with yeah. the 100. Wow. I hope he's got some backbone. <laughs> he's really got I mean, some backbone. He's he sticking up for himself. Like, yeah. yeah. He said the fight left. I mean, he said he felt bad. That's a bit of a cop out for me, I think. It's all right. No, I'm is just it? saying that's what he said. Sure. I mean, what's what he the says truth? and what he believes is different. But 350. <laughs> you, shouldn't be, you shouldn't be ashamed. You shouldn't be like. I'm not ashamed. I can see you are because you're being defensive. Jack no, has opened this like pot, by the way, and now he's fired out of C bet. The way you go about putting your point across is awful. Oh. <laughs> it is awful. <laughs> no, awful, awful. Awful. Yeah. It is awful too. It's, 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 it's embarrassing awful. really. It is embarrassing. Yeah, for you, not for me though. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, it could be. It's all a matter of opinion. Oh, he just put Tony on the defensive, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> Don't you think so? Yeah, he has, yeah. And he's check raised with actually a terrible hand to check graze with, isn't it? I'm quite surprised. It's quite interesting, this is. I, I guess he's a... Uh... It's because it's three-way that he's decided to check raise? I mean, it's a... Uh, this is one of those... Go on. And Jaka's just peeled off. I mean, this... Do you think Lewis is a little bit rattled that he's made this check raise? It's a... I'm not sure. Like I said before, like, it's... This is when, when you're, like, having a discussion during a hand, and that it sometimes, like, puts a different spin on things. I mean, he's now playing a pretty big pot out of position with a medium hand, and he has no idea what Jaka has, right? I mean, no, Jaka's made the best hand now, but I mean, uh, yeah, Jaka's call on the flop is pretty strong there, I think. 
second. But why do you think Jaka has called on them? He obviously did not read this I check think, raise's strength. No, not at all. Uh, he's just floating and. Uh, check. And now he's checked because he actually has something. Uh, yeah, he. I'd expect him to probably bet the turn if he didn't. I mean, was Lewis making a check raise on the flop sort of like one of those check raises you make, you try and kind of end it, or...? I think so, maybe, but maybe before he gets some value from, like, medium pairs. Check his hand quite looks like uh, maybe, like, eights or nines now, though, so maybe maybe, uh, maybe Toby's, Toby's going to go for a value bet on the river. He's going to get snap called when he bets. Right, and I mean, it seems like there's oh. no way oh, yeah. Lewis can have a straight here. Well, okay, it's, Jack has just gone all in. Wow, he's checked and he's gone all in. So he's effectively. This, this, is, this is a really, really good bet. Right now, the, the bet is, is only for Toby Lewis's stack, which is about eight thousand, which is still a double pot bet. Yeah. And this is what we were hoping from Faraz Jaka, a very loud game in terms of poker. And this is what he sat quiet like a mouse. And he's actually getting stared down here by th third pair for a double pot bet, 8,000 for Toby's entire stack. And you know what? The problem for Lewis is if he calls, Tony G is going to just never, oh, no. ever, ever <laughs> stop. And <laughs> if he folds gonna, oh, no. and gets shown the seven deuce, it's going to be ten times worse. Oh, boy. I feel like he's going to hear a call. I do, too. Okay. He has oh, called! Right? Uh, two, he's looking at a straight or like... Unbeatable hand. Nice Tony waited three seconds, but no longer. 100% I bet you, you know, <laughs> on you. <laughs> and Lewis now, he's now That's stuck a stack. I want him to call. Tony straight in there with the needle. God. You want to make it, don't put any pressure on the, on the kid. Get a refill, get 20,000. I mean, do you think he just like, as a kid, just sat around and burned fire ants all day long? Yeah. You know, a can of aerosol, a lighter, ladybugs, ants, grasshoppers. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Game on, I would say. Game on. I don't think that's an easy decision for Toby on the river. It was a he gutsy call, actually. It was a gutsy call, but he, he knows Jack is capable of turning stuff into broth there. And perhaps... Something tell me they're not going to be best friends. Toby Lewis, he'd been picture. up. He'd been a little down, uh, and now he's stuck the full 10,000 euros. Yeah, I'm, I'm you can see how big this game no is going to play. But he, he probably takes it personally. No, it's just a game, you know? I just want to put pressure. Yes. I, wanna, I love it. And for Jaka... I mean, what, what am I going to come uh, here? Uh, play such a small just game. Just really, the, I think, brilliance as far as knowing exactly what the, the his is player is and the perception that of it. Yeah, yeah, the game much smaller, and that's the biggest issue. Yeah, I mean, he's surely justified, but it's just not good for the game. Doesn't make so him if a he doesn't bad want person, to play the just, bigger game, it, it, yeah. she shouldn't play Absolutely it. makes it a bad person. But we don't talk yeah, about it, it until person, he comes just, back. It's because it's yeah, no fun to talk about it. Just, so just yeah, it definitely, kills, it definitely and kills the action a bit. And the that guy left because of it. It's back. It's really sad. We're trying to produce an entertainment here. Oh, this, is why, this is why it's on TV, because yeah. you can go and play... Tony's been relentless. And he's loving this now. Tony is loving this. And this is the first time Edo stuck chips in the pot since he sat down. 10,000 strong, and he's going to get a huge lesson here. It's just going to become a slippery slope. Imagine I come and I'm the only one making the action. I mean, then I'm... It Should can't work that way, you know? I, I I'll want tell you, play. one guy who's going to be happy to see this hand is Torelli. Yeah, Obviously, yeah, the seventh seat is just the seat of death, isn't it? I'm happy to give money away to make a show. Torelli is probably happy to get out of that seat. Maybe he'll come back in a new seat and run better. Be the only one, like, putting 200. Every, every time we play, I'm putting 200. <laughs> no, you don't have to. I, I, and that's what I said to everyone. You don't have to put the 200. Put the 100, and don't put the 200. You know, this fine, is a I'll pretty, put it. I'll be the only one. Big, uh, is it Just so bet? everyone has a straddle. And that's what I said. 
Oh my gosh! Everyone just put 200. Did you realize what just happened? Everyone's getting great. What? Edo has casually, has casually snapped in 10k with two nines. Like there was no money in that pot. You're busy on it. It's very dangerous. The most dangerous pair. Pescatori in a great spot to double up here. Although. Edo's yeah, got the, the straight draw now, the pens are nines, and Pescatori's chin could hit the fell. Yeah. There it is. That's it! That's <laughs> it, now there's a redraw. How easy was that, huh? Yeah. Nine on the river, Pescatori came <laughs> out of it, but he's gonna be <laughs> sick as a dog! Ouch. And what's this gonna do for Pescatori, who's, think about it, he's had the ace king a couple times, did he? Nine, He's had some huge hands, and here he is broke. So Max Pescatori is going to reload here, 5,000 euros more, and uh, we'll see how that does him. By the way, we've just got a new player here, Irma Derwish, who I believe is French. I've never come across him before. All right, Simon Denman, you're going to leave us uh, for just a little break here while we... Uh, I, I welcome into the box. Uh, a very surprised Alec Torelli. And Alec, we we had no idea that you were even in the running to get voted off there. I'm flattered, thanks. I wish uh, I wish you were voting. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean, it was it seemed like one of those days. I know everybody has good days and bad days. That seemed like you only had two hours. Not something went wrong. Everything went wrong for you. Yeah, I got smashed. <laughs> I mean, ridiculously oh, punished. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, and then I got the, the add insult to injury. I got the boot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, I guess there is a chance. Are you on the list to get back in the game? or? Yeah, I mean, uh, I told them I would play anytime, so Perfect. I don't know if, if I can or there's room, but uh, I'd love to go back, obviously, get some of the money back. Right. Try. The Pescatori's opened this pot after the straddle and right, gotten called the... by Tony and Edo. Um... Ido's flopped, flopped top pair here. Um, by the way, this is, we were saying, this is probably the only thing worse than getting booted off of the big game is losing 20K straight in the seat, seeing a guy sit down in the seat and just immediately win every hand. Yeah. Get, 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 you know. I'm not going to, I'm not going to root against the guy, but, uh, <laughs> you, you I, know. Think, I don't know if you saw just before you got here, he took the nines up against Pescatori's Queens and, and did he and find a nine? Oh, he found oh. a straight anyway. And, Easy. And busted Max. Oh but. no. <laughs> I gave Max all the money to win too, right. to lose back to him too. <laughs> Oh, no. And here, uh, Tony has raised this flop, and Edo has called, and then Pescatori folded. So, um, so Tony check raised here. Uh, no, uh, Pescatori landed it from under the gun, and Tony's raised from the button. And then Edo has cold called. Cold called from the straddle position, yeah. <laughs> He's such a champion. He just raised with no equity. Right, and then found, found a little bit. Fires it out, and like. Well, he's got a fire again here, but I mean. I mean, at this stage, Edo is basically calling with a hand that can only beat like zero bluffs, and that's it. Yeah, the problem is that uh, it's somewhat hard for Tony to have a, anything, a big value hand. I mean, I the, right. the other the other problem on the turn Nothing. is that you got anything? Yeah. You win. with with Tony's with Tony's bet on the turn, it, if the guy's calling the flop, he's always going to call the turn, and then he's going to decide the river. So. Raising the flop is is what it is. If you know, a lot of times you win the pot if nobody has an ace. But when someone calls you, you should be done on the turn. Almost. Or you should be done on the turn, or you should bet the river. Right. You know, you, you you can't do one and not the other. Toby Lewis is back and loaded. There he is. 10k euros more. Back for more from Barcelona after this. Here in Barcelona, the world's top players are testing their endurance and their bankroll in one of the most competitive cash games in the poker calendar. The big game has seen famous faces get their egos smashed and their wallets emptied. But in season seven, with four stops around the globe, we're set for our most exciting series yet. You can see the, the scores on the doors here. Jaka now ahead 16,000. Uh, and Toby Lewis now the big loser. Uh, well, right. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> no so so far. <laughs> but but Bombstein. I mean, what do you make of Bombstein? Because um, 
Obviously, he got a bit yeah. lucky with the uh, ace nine against your queens early on, but then he played a couple pots after that where he seemed to just be a step ahead of you or or have a good read or something. Yeah, um, yeah, he plays well. I mean, he, it's tough when people are really aggressive because, you know, it's hard to know when they have it and when they don't. And uh, I'd love to know, what did he have when I had ace jack? He had ace jack. He did? Which was, uh, yeah, he had the same kind of sick. I was it actually. It was a very sick, uh, it was like a four bet by him, right? Yeah, you know, I wasn't, uh, he's never supposed to have a big hand there. And he knows that. So I thought it might be a spot where he's not going to bluff as much. And I didn't think he was bluffing. But uh, I thought he might have ace queen, which is like the hand I was the most worried about. And actually, I, I didn't think he, I thought he was doing it for value. And, you know, I mean, he had ace jack, so I guess I was right to some extent. But. This is an interesting hand. It was something you did earlier, uh, as well as for Azjaka, which is just flatting with the seven deuce rather than playing it aggressively, play flop. Yeah. And uh, Blogger's opened here for 300. Nice. Bombstein's flatted. And now, what do you think Bombstein's going to do to this? Uh, How much does. Uh, the gentleman have that made it 1100. Sergio Ido has got about uh, 17,000 oh, okay. back or Here so. We are. Yeah. Hello. Well, I don't think he's going to get to the decision because Jaka is going to make it. 3K oh my gosh. Here. So I mean, he's he's seven deuce. I mean, he's actually reprieved. He could just fold. Right. But uh, we raise. And there's a by the way, there's a huge reason uh, obviously for Jaka oh. to play this fast, which is that he just witnessed Ido like shoving in about eight k on the two oh. nines. Well, and <laughs> you know? when you know seven deuce is involved, uh, you right. know when you have two kings. Uh, uh, I mean, you, in a normal game, you would do this with two kings because you know you could be bluffing oh, here. Of course, Jaka could have the seven deuce. But Jaka could have seven deuce. So, you know, if he's sees a three bet uh, in front of him. I know if he has ace queen, I mean, he, ace queen suited, he might not fold, especially to Jaka. Especially Jaka could have just a stone bluff. Under 22, so. Now, Bombstein's actually considering something here, but isn't it the idea that tough. the pot's gotten big enough that you almost take the seven deuce out of it now? I mean, almost. The problem is you got to worry about two people, and even if one of them is bluffing, uh, you have seven deuce, so it's unlikely someone else does. And if one person's bluffing, you know, you got to worry about the other guy having it. And so it's really ambitious here. I mean, he stuck 300 in the pot. Is there any reason to continue at all? <laughs> That's why we play the seven deuce <laughs> game. <laughs> it depends yeah. on what. Uh, see, Jaka's got wow. 24,000, so you really got to make it like 6,000. Oh my here. gosh, you're right. Here Jaka is. is so deep. In fact,. This, so that's the idea. They're so deep that Bombstein feels like he can put a 24,000 euro right. stack at risk for only right. about 6K or so? Yeah, something six. like that. I mean, now I don't, you know, he, he doesn't really have to worry about him that much because even if he was raising for value, which he was with Ace Queen, he pretty much has to get, give it up here. So uh, he gets the three better to fold quite a bit. And uh, yeah, you're six right. I mean, he is only worried about Jaka. And. You you know you play these big cash games. People never see this situation in tournaments. You know when you're 500 big blinds deep. Kings is not as strong 500 big blinds deep as as other no. hands, is it? Yeah, <laughs> it's true. That's true. That's why the uh, deep stack cash games are, I, I believe, the most complex form of poker. What is that? I said, of course I have it. I just couldn't help myself. I wanted to fold so badly. Fold. Show seven. Kings. Too much. Too much. Too much. Can't have too much. I did die. I did seven dudes. Yeah. And uh, Bombstein says, I couldn't help myself. Like, yeah. yeah. It's just <laughs> done 6,000 euros it's in cold blood with the seven dudes. As you say, that's why you play that's the game. That's why you play the game. Yeah, and I think if he has, <laughs> if he had ace king or something, he would have already, you would have heard from him pre flop. Uh, you know, surely if he had two aces, you would have heard from him pre flop too. So I don't, I, I don't think kings are ever behind there. But. Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe he, th maybe Jaka thinks that uh, you know he might have two tens and then talk himself into calling because you know J he might think Jaka has the seven deuce. Race four, four hundred. This is Imad Derwish, uh, who sat down with five thousand. This is the first time he's put chips in the pot, and uh, you know he's not that selective. <laughs> well, it's quite a big race too. Um, people four. usually c conform to the standard open size. And so when he opens for cool. 400 here, it's something to, to note as well. Right. Maybe it's just his standard open, or maybe he does it uh, more from early position or more with hands he doesn't want anybody to call with. It kind of handcuffed Pescatori a little bit too, didn't it? I mean, he's only got 4K. I guess he figured he... 
happy three bets he feels like the guy's just gonna fold if he doesn't have and it's the guy the first time the guy opened i mean you gotta right. give him some credit right yeah i mean i wonder if pescatori is even playing fit or fold here that'd be quite interesting to see Check. well i think uh when you first play with people and you, you don't play with them much you play a little more straightforward maybe take the passive lines to get a little more information of how they play how they think and then you start to adjust and evolve your game a little bit so perhaps that's what that's what pescatori is cool. doing you feel here. like yeah there's always value kind of in seeing a guy's cards right. just so you get ahead in his head a little bit yeah and just just learning how they think and how they play quite a bit so he checked called check. here <laughs> he did wow that's strong <laughs> so you're getting inside his head a little bit now too he's a bit of a madman well i know i know what he has but i'm sure pescatori <laughs> thinks he might have ace high or two nines or something or an eight and now that this bet has come sort of big i mean derwash has picked up the flesh draw this is one of the better oh. cards well, he got this far he can't can't fold now. No, no. I was just wondering <laughs> if he could actually find it, find a raise there. I guess not. I, I mean, mean, it wouldn't be a bad play because you, you know, if you're pescatore, you can't really put the gentleman on uh, on queen high when he check calls the flop. Right. So you got to think he has something. My it's goodness. just way better to get there though. Anyway. Yeah, that's much better. And Max is going to go through the roof now. He's had the queens cracked by the nines, and he's about to. S if I'm Max here, I'm probably going to bet because I think that the guy has ace high a lot or an eight. <laughs> and I just don't really ever feel like I'm beat here. I mean, you don't think he's got ace king here sometimes? Or? Sometimes that's the problem. He has ace king. But uh, and the other question is, how often does he call the river with a hand worse than a than a king than two tens? Um, but you know, Max again has less than he has less than the pot here. So um, and it's so funny because look at this. The line that this I man has taken is check call, check call, lead on the deuce of clubs on oh, the so river. Oh, so he led. I yeah, thought he checked. He just led. <laughs> oh, my mistake. <laughs> he just led now for about 900. Oh well, then Max has a call here. I can't, I can't see him folding 900 into 4,000. But he's especially gonna, when it's such a strange line, right. isn't it? I mean, it you can't like think it. the guy's leading with the king now, can you? All right. It's like, why wouldn't he have check raised with the king on the turn? Or if he didn't check raise with the king with the turn, now why is he betting when the club comes on the river here, right? I Max must just be out of his mind. He's going to love this when he calls. Yes. I feel like he's going to call here. I mean, of course he's going to call. Because usually when hands don't make sense and you have something, you call. Because they don't make sense. And the queen nine of clubs, it certainly doesn't make sense here. <laughs> And it's it's not a terrible rule of thumb, is it? That no, I mean it's especially against a person you've never played against before. I mean, it's it's hard because you don't know what they think, and so when you don't know that, you have so little information. You have to just play straightforward. I don't know how he could ever fold. I don't think he could fold. I think I would call a little quicker, to be honest. Right. The question is how he's going to react when and he I know, sees I it. I know what the guy's cards are, <laughs> and I'd call a little quicker. Yeah, you know it's going to be for Pescatori. And the pirate has been pillaged himself. <laughs> That's a good line. <laughs> and when you, yeah, I mean. What is your history with Max Pescatori? I mean, you, you, you know, he's a bit of an old timer. He's definitely a cash Watch game grinder in a yeah. sense. Yeah, and uh, we talked briefly at the table. We, uh, He's from he's from Italy, of course, and uh, I've been uh, spending quite a bit of more time there recently. That's right. That's so right. So we had some catching up to do. Practice Italian a little. <laughs> uh, yeah, but he I actually told me he's been uh, in Vegas for 20 years. He was so a lot, the first. A lot more uh, experienced than a lot of people might might even uh, right. expect or might might know. I was pretty impressed with that. All right. Any guy who was beating the cash games in Vegas like Max was in the the 90s and the the noughts uh, definitely has a lot of. Uh, like sort of inner strength, as right. you would say. It just takes a lot to be here after 20 years, putting money on the table. Yeah. You know, it takes something more than just, so much more than just, you know, how to react to flopped bets and turn bets and stuff like that. It just takes so much more as as a, being a good poker player instead yeah, of I playing mean, poker. You know, I, there's just so much more to it. And so you got to respect anyone that's here after 20 years. I mean, it's all the hidden things, isn't it? How to right. handle guys like Tony G, the straddling, the cash game negotiations. Yeah, there's so much that goes into it. and and. So much determines how you win that is beyond just your ability to actually play the game, you know, after 20 years like that. So you got to give the guy credit. Uh, so let's see. Eight deuce. He, he, he Maybe he misread it or maybe he just wants to show the deuce and hope people buy out. <laughs> you know, wow. Or maybe he's you're just actually always jockey. thinking. I think you're right. I think he's going to do that play, the buyout. I mean, if you're going to get this far with eight deuce i would show the deuce and ask for a buyout and try and win 300. I, I mean this also i mean i would buy out if someone <laughs> showed me a deuce sure. i mean what? 
<laughs> but, uh, we'll get it up. I mean, this is kind of an isolation play as, as well. Uh, maybe he decides I mean, he wants to play Ido for some reason. Let's just be honest. This is a fault. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> this is a fault. But uh, I, I'm thinking back. I mean, especially without any history with Ido. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, the, I mean right. is the guy. I mean, if you knew that he opens and folds a lot, maybe, sure. Right, but, uh, or you knew it was his last $5,000 or something. <laughs> but, I mean, the guy just got there. Jaka sent out a tweet a, a couple of weeks or months ago that was uh, got a lot of notoriety. He said that Call. people often don't realize how powerful it is to play the seven deuce without the seven deuce game because if you show it down, it puts people on tilt. Yeah. He says there's all kinds of equity there. Maybe. Maybe he's thinking that. Yeah, Check. and so he's going up a, going up a level to the eight deuce well, just to put someone on tilt. Eight deuce is seven deuce now, so. Yeah, I think so. But it was interesting to, to think about, he said, especially in tournaments, uh, I mean, this is a cash game, but in a tournament, if you can show that hand down, sometimes you know what you gain later on uh, makes it actually a, po a profitable play. <laughs> maybe he just wants to be maybe. have a reason to play every hand. But or maybe if he tweets it, everybody knows that, so it's a lot more profitable. That's true. <laughs> I shouldn't expose him. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know the answer. So, so it takes some courage from Jockey here to barrel again because his opponent. Uh, his opponent called the re-raise, and he check called the flop. A lot of times, he's going to have a suited ace, sure. uh, ace jack, uh, I mean, of course. He could have ace like. queen. He could have a, a set. Um, the problem is the only hands he has that are check call, check fold are the king highs and queens that he decides to check fold again with. And so right, and actually, he's getting himself in a position where, if the guy does call here and he does have that kind of ace with a raggedy or medium kicker, Jaka has to barrel the river again. Yeah, he's got to go like. That's, Full bore. That's that's why I said it takes some courage here, and I think that that I, it's tough. It's a tough spot to know what to do, and without any history with these guys, it's hard to know what type of player your opponent is. Is he the guy that's going to even call the flop with king he king high? I mean, against the, uh, against a, a random person I've never played with, when they check call the flop, I I got to give him more credit for an ace than I do with now, king high, right? I mean, you made a great prediction. Think about this: if if eight o folds right now, I mean, Jock is going to rake the the six thousand in the pot. Oh. Then. Call! Wow. Case clear. What, what the? Wow. And what this kind of call is that, by the way? I mean, it's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is... Uh, it's properly nutty. Yeah, though. it is. It is. I mean, it's... You want to see this one blank off, even, don't you? This has to... We, yes. There we go. Okay, now we've got action. Check. And now it's just so hard to bet here because Edo Check. has an ace so often that um oh he just mucked he's it, right? just shown down the king high and jaka jaka says i missed but what could you have missed yeah so those guys are thinking what well, could when you he have says missed? he missed you know king high is good if he had a pair he would <laughs> he probably wouldn't bet the turn with a pair right i mean when he's betting the turn he's getting getting his opponent to fold the king high we'll be back for more from the casino barcelona as the big game continues after the break Sun, sand, and plenty of tapas here in Barcelona for the big game seven. Easy game, huh? Easy oh, money. 150. You're drawing and you're good. Yeah. You don't even know when you're good in this game, right? Tony G never lets things lie, and he's still nipping at Toby Lewis's heel. Paul, Paul, Paul. This is a hand I don't even mind limping under the gun here. Call 150. Raising's fine, of course. But uh, I like to limp. It's kind of fun. Call. and uh, It puts you in some interesting situations Yeah, it does, as well. for sure. Uh, I mean, that ace-jack hand you had against Bombstein, that started off with a limp, didn't it? Or it did. Call. It's a strange re-raiser by him there, but uh, you got to give him credit. I mean, he's 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 got some... I didn't realize how much play he had to his game. Uh, he's, he's putting in some... Yeah, I played with him two years ago on the game, and so I was uh, expecting. Ex him well, I was not sure what would uh, what gear he'd be in today, and uh, I've only seen uh, that that one session with him, and so it was interesting. But here's a here's a huge hand uh, for these guys. The problem is it's hard to win any money here. Bet four hundred. I mean, it's well disguised by Belager 
and now the question: Do you call again, or do you? Uh, I, I kind raise here. Jocker call calls, so now you got to raise. It's quite funny because Blogger can almost just hide between the feud between Jocka and Lewis. <laughs> but now you like the raise. Ah. Uh, you feel like you're gonna. Well, the thing is, if it's the thing is, if uh, if Lewis has something and you raise here, um, you know he's probably not gonna go away, right? And he led into two people. Right. Um, Jaka also has a hand quite often that he could call a raise on the flop with. Um, if he has a, it's hard for him to have a jack. So you got to figure that one of them has a draw. Right. And so uh, you know you want to you want to get value from that. You want to protect your hand a little bit. His hand's quite a bit disguised. Um, and the thing is, if he just calls here, what's he going to do? Then raise the turn. It's hard to win a little bit of more money. It's he's getting frozen if uh, you know a straight card or a flush draw comes. So it's also hard for the original raiser to barrel into two people when it goes call call. So you got to. You got to think you're going to win more money by raising. And just the way these guys are staring at everything, it's almost like they're looking for reasons to get more money in the pot. Yeah, and it's kind of unfortunate away. for him. He had the hands that both players are just going to immediately fold. But uh, now I, I believe I've uh, been told that Belager just had a very big result in WPT London, perhaps. Uh, maybe it was at the it final table the there. So got off some, some form. It does completely ruin other people. Uh, but he, he definitely looks... I, I, a lot of times when a guy comes into these things in form, you just see a different game than you would expect. I mean, I think Bombstein's like that right now, maybe. Yeah. He had no, the, the Spaniard's pretty calm. He's yeah. just kind of, eh, whatever. <laughs> All you can eat. Like a friend of mine says. All in is Max. So he raised to 500. I'm assuming Tony double straddled. Is that what happened? Yes. Okay. Tony's double straddle. Blogger's open to 500. Pescatory all in. I mean, it's hard to fold when the guy only has 1,600, 1,200. It's actually, when you do have a small, a short stack in he games that call, are He did call, actually. Okay. I mean, he only has, uh, he has 1,600. He has eight big blinds. Right. I mean, how could it's he fold? Drama, right. There was this one too. <laughs> <laughs> I think short stacks get, uh, actually you actually get some big advantages with short stacks. Oh, huge. When there's Tremendous. lots of straddles out there. Especially when there's straddles in seven deuce because yeah. people are opening wider, people are calling wider, three betting wider, and you, I mean, you're mostly waiting for hands that just have pure value okay. over the other person. And so it's a great advantage, yeah. Thank you guys for letting me save the hundred of the live straddle, the hand before. Yeah, it's worth that I multiplied. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's a little needle. Pescatori <laughs> likes it. But what I do like about Pescatori is that uh, as far as the, th the, the issue goes, straddle, not straddle, uh, he's quite comfortable not to do it and let everybody hate him if that's the way he feels. And you kind of have to have that attitude in the cash game. You know, if everybody's going to hate me, let them hate me. Yeah, in situations like that always come up. Uh, you know, like Toby Lewis will Lewis never got straddle again. Right. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> On principle. Lewis got the... Uh, yeah, I got the short end of the stick tonight where he got, you know, hit pretty hard with Tony. But uh, there's always going to be uh, someone that's not comfortable with some of the variations of the game that you want to change. And so, you know, that, that happens. Can it's he come back in the game? <laughs> you know, he got involved in this yeah, in the so. on he TV against the worst spot where that has happened <laughs> in his <laughs> career, I'm sure. But uh, you get voted back. The fans can vote. Yeah, back. there's always <laughs> someone proposing a new variation oh, of the game and someone objecting, and it's like just sort of part of the table, yeah. part of the game. It can happen yeah. to any one of us. It can happen oh. to the best of us, you know. You can think you're a star, and then you get voted off. That's it. End of your career, right there. Race. <laughs> the nail in the coffin. <laughs> you try to get it up, you know. 250. We decide where they do the streaming is blocked in Italy, so we get... Call 250. It's on Facebook. It is blocked. Ah. That's it's what... Uh, so I had a raise to 250. Oh. Jacka calls here. 850. And G... And G with the... Uh, I don't know if it's a three bet, a four it bet, or what the heck bet. it is, but... He might have gone to the well one too many times here with this, because he did it last time that Jacka opened on the button, too, and Jacka gave him credit. This time he has to get through two people. And uh, 
Does it feel like... Unlikely. Is it, is it that Ado's playing a lot of pots or that these guys are trying to play Sixth pots with Ado? I don't know why. What did he do? I know. <laughs> Every time he's in the head, it's just... I, does he get the feeling that, like, maybe Faraz Jaka was in the tournament with Ado and just, like, witnessed this, you know, some sort of sequence? That's what's so interesting when... Uh, just putting myself in the place of the casual observer and not knowing so much of the history that has gone on behind these players and so much of what they're thinking and affects their decision and we're here and we can only speculate and who knows they might have they might have played 10,000 hands online together last month they might have played in a big cash game last week and it's just so much of that affects how each of these players is going to play this hand right here and, and we could only uh, we could only guess I mean that was essentially an oh. easy fold and Ado Ado thought, 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 and then called. This I mean, Ace Deuce is a loaded anyway, do, isn't it? I prefer. <laughs> I don't know. I guess if he feels that Jock is gonna, Deuce. I guess he thinks that Jock is gonna call so often here. Just gotta qualify to win. That's all. How deep is he here? Let's see. Maybe oh, they're he's, deep. I mean, oh, he's pretty all, deep. These guys are all like 20k deep. Uh, I actually don't mind just calling. I mean, I, I don't hate calling here. You're, you're really deep, and uh, your hand doesn't play that bad Check. post flop. It plays pretty well. You flop some good straight draws, the nut flush draw, and. Um, I'm always the guy that set up the bet. Obviously, if you hit 16, a tricky 15. two pair, three deuces, 16, you know, you win 15. quite a bit of money. And you feel like you're going to go three way to the flop often enough. And. Fold. Jeez, Tony's bet 16.50. Give now, Tony credit. Uh, well, Jock is surely not going anywhere. He's not. But how, how much is he thinking about the seven deuce on board there and that it could be in Tony's range? Or do you think like that? Yeah, of course. You got to consider that. And now you know that one Fold. of the hands that's 15. not, I want to say likely, but that's possible is uh, now improved to beat yours. But, I mean, Jock only has one decision here, and that's to call. I mean, uh, right, you can't really raise, and you certainly can't fold. So you got to just call, and you'll have the turn to reevaluate in this spot. And there's a lot of great cards for Jocka's hand that uh, right. that helps him. Well, this is a great card. Uh, that's a terrible card for Check. Jocka, but um, you got to think that Tony's going to bet again here, trying to represent the ace now. Um, and if Tony doesn't bet Hold here, out. is it just a lack of Hold heart? <laughs> I mean, Tony doesn't have a lack of heart. No. <laughs> no. But I mean, you, 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 at this stage, you really can't give up on these pots, right? The ace is kind of a good bluffing card in a sense. Eh, in a way, it depends how much Jocka thinks that Tony's going to bet with just an ace. I mean, if, to, if Tony has ace queen here, is he going to bet again or is he going to check for pot control? And if, if Jocka thinks that Tony's not going to bet enough with an ace, maybe he calls again with an eight. The problem was that uh, all the hands that Tony has that he was bluffing the flop with now just picked up so much equity against Jaka because if he has a straight draw and a flush draw, he oh. has two overcards with that. And so the best Jaka could hope for, even with the deuce of diamonds, he has a ton of equity. Show the deuce of diamonds. Did he? Or did he show the king of hearts? I mean, he, he, he bluffs so often that maybe he wants some credit for the times that he's, <laughs> you know, when he's actually at, when he can get away with not showing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I was qualified. I didn't want people to think I'm bluffing. There it is. See, and exactly. I mean, he's, he's bluffing so Double often that when he doesn't show, people so automatically <laughs> think that he had it, <laughs> which uh, reestablishes some yeah, credit from imagine him. Imagine you do have that. It's an awkward situation, you know. You sure you, you lose? The money back. That's right. I'm happy, I'm happy to win something. I would have been happy to take another 4,000. We'll be back for more from the Casino Barcelona as the big game continues after the break. Welcome back to a busy casino, Barcelona, where the party poker big game is playing out alongside day three of the World Poker Tour. He's gotten nearly even, Tony. He's only stuck 300 euros now, which is not bad in this game. Me. I'd love to be stuck 300 euros <laughs> in this game. It's not easy. But yeah, he's going straight after Faraz Jaka. I mean, I guess you have to go after the guy on your right. You but I right. think that's, you, you, you hit it right on the head. I think that just it's around. more that, uh, Whoever's on his right is just going to get abused in this game, and so it's it's an unfortunate seat draw for Faraz. And uh, the Jack will have plans for that, won't he? I mean, yeah, I mean, you gotta <laughs> you gotta open a little <laughs> bit less, right? Or maybe maybe it's a good time to start limping, maybe because uh, if you open, you don't get three bet. You could limp and then call a bet. And uh, hands, especially like a seven. Um, I mean, in the cutoff, it's tempting to raise too, of course. But uh, race. If Tony G's opened this pot to 350, and the three bet now from Lewis from the big blind. 
Uh, it's so great here to have a big uh, – Lewis has got to be pretty happy. He doesn't have aces, but, you know, he has a very solid hand, and he feels like he's going to get called so often or played back with, especially because of what's going on between them. And Tony here, yeah, he's calling exactly <laughs> like uh, it off. with a hand that he might otherwise fold. Um, and I think it, you got to think that it's it's just to tilt him when he wins a hand with 10-4 on the river, right? I mean, it has to be what it is. Absolutely. I mean, he's not going to win this hand because Lewis just absolutely smashed the flop here. Is it such a big flop that Lewis wants to check, or is that just fishy? You have to bet. No, I, would, I wouldn't mind checking at all. Um, especially because when you check, it looks like you might be giving up. And uh, you represent like two tens when you check. And uh, you have a hand that's so, so, so strong, you could call check call comfortably twice so easily. Um, and if a club comes, you could win a ton of money by checking because your opponent now might represent the flush that you can't have because you checked, right? You can't have a flush drop. You can't have a flush drop. You check the flop, right? And look at Tony. He's trying to figure out a way to win this pot anyway. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, he might just call here. <laughs> I mean, he's just, he's just trying to figure out a way. That's why you got to <laughs> love it having ace-queen here because it's just so beautiful to have a good hand in a spot where you know you're going after someone and they're going after you. Um, a lot going on in the minds of these two guys right now. Right. So if Tony wants to make a play at this pot, what – Obviously, we know he can't win, but you, you, you float and, re and then try and make a play on the turn. Or raising here, is that the best way to try and get him off a couple hands? Or Well, it's hard to say something that uh, is going to sound like a great option. Um, but usually when you have a hand that flops no equity, the way to beat the opponent that you want to get after is just to fold until you have some equity <laughs> but that wouldn't be tony g wow, did you see toby um, lewis let him get away with one there the chip went over the line i mean like oh i, I missed it yeah it it, it, it kind of oh, splashed a yeah, little bit yeah. and then it went back i just wonder i mean oh tony mccall well you know after after a guy's given me all right. that i'm calling the tournament director over right. you know no, what i'm saying no but you gotta have heart to do that nah. <laughs> uh, raising is definitely not a bad way to uh if you are let's let's assume that your only two options are i'm gonna win i'm gonna win this pot how to do it call or raise <laughs> i just can't blame the guy for raising and um, the click raise does look quite strong i guess which is what he's done the tony calling here is is is, is the right move i feel like uh let's see he has um 99 and a half percent equity well oh. i mean he has he has a pot size bet left so yeah. Um, if your opponent has a hand that he's he's value betting with, he's gonna put it all in on the turn anyway. Right. Um, and if 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 uh, if he has a flush draw, he's gonna shove the turn anyway, and you could just call. So you could raise back, but certainly calling can't be wrong. And give Check. give Tony a chance to pick up some equity on the turn and bluff you off it. Check. He's given up though. Yeah, I'm checking almost every river here if I'm Lewis. Interesting. Because, just because Tony has nothing so often, and um, okay. yeah, plays really well. Checking here is, is really good. You could represent two tens or, or two kings. Maybe now Tony might think that uh, Lewis will fold, and wow, this is it's so, so tempting to oh, bet. Oh, wow. he's let it go. Give him credit. I mean, the momentum you switch would have been huge. Huh? I think he's going to be really yeah. strict about showing. Absolutely. First. Absolutely. Lewis says, you have to show me. I'm not course. giving you anything. And uh, <laughs> that's his own version yeah, of the needle. I think Lewis has quite, quite got quite a strong personality, and uh, he knows friendly. when to exercise it. I didn't put the pressure on you. I gave you plenty of money. <laughs> Pretty happy taking that pot down. How friendly is that? Very friendly. 2,400 present. Don't play donkey. Don't even push it anywhere. 3,400. Well, 2,400. Giving money away. And I enjoy the park. So if you're a guy you know, who has guy seen smile. Tony G play in the past well, before you know, and now consider him quite tight, you're, you're at that table, you've seen that what he's done with that 10-4 plus maybe the, the, some of the king deuce. Are you reevaluating now, Tony? Like, oh, yeah. And I think uh, the king deuce was just 
I don't know why. He just I, what, did, maybe maybe there's something with this Edo guy, but uh, the ten four. Oh. I think you have to assume it's that that's possible. not going to happen against you if you're the random person. I think that because of the way Tony wants to keep his image, because of uh, uh, wanting to get Lewis in particular, that uh, the ten four is going to be a little more likely to have against someone like Lewis than maybe against uh, Scott, for example. Meanwhile, he's opened the eight three to three hundred, but as maybe the G. not. You know, maybe he's just in fifth gear right now, and uh, <laughs> that's it. You know, he's in something. He's in something. <laughs> so we got a call here. I guess it's head up between himself and I, Mad. Check. And I'm at the bottom end of the straight draw. Takes some heart for Tony to bet here. The visors are on. The glasses are on. Call. You know you're not allowed to call unless you're qualified the flop. But I guess he doesn't know that uh, that IMAD's been calling with. Oh, I guess he did see IMAD call with Queen Nine, so it's pretty right. ambitious here too. I wonder if he's too. clocked okay. that. Yeah, he's just gonna give up, isn't he? But if you're going to give up, I mean, it's almost you prefer almost think about giving up on the flop just right. because, you know, you feel like you're going to get check called so often. And here the guy found a straight, too. Take it, take it, take it. Don't, 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 yeah, I mean, don't, do, it. don't do it to me. <laughs> Tony doesn't even want to waste <laughs> Failed to qualify all the way. Slick sunglasses for the Frenchman and a nice little pot. It's almost such a shame, too, Tony so playing hands that are so good for his image and he's not getting a chance to show any of them in right. spots where he could use them to it's really get under someone's skin four. especially the hand against that's toby yeah, maybe yeah. if the flop is uh yeah. i don't know queen 10-4 yeah, or some some dramatic situation where even if toby doesn't lose all his money even if uh uh he just check folds to tony tony g and tony gets to show him the 10-4 just to get under someone's skin it's unfortunate almost when you're when you're playing this loose that you don't even get that 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 satisfaction afterwards right but it'll happen it'll happen i mean he did get to show well he could have showed the whole king dudes but. yeah and we've got the straddle two we've got the straddle 400 out from tony g <laughs> well, we could still <laughs> we could still negotiate with him <laughs> to get him back to save him. Yeah. <laughs> we could still save him. I'm always willing to listen. <laughs> right? I mean, we could we could save you. Well, Scott's got a hand here, King Queen. He's almost yeah. certainly going to make it a thousand, especially with all that money in the pot. Look at the money. Out there. Look at the money. Take it. Take everything. And this is what happens take with it, the straddles, it, guys. Uh, well, now, I mean, Scott has fifty. He got yeah, Trump. So what, what was once a big stack became fifty big blinds. Toby has even less. He's 35 big blinds. So, I mean, is he going to shove? Wow. What's he going to do? He might just call. He's in position. Sitting on around 13K is Toby. And you can't really blame him for calling here, seeing a flop. I mean, Pauline. Pauline. he's gone for it. There I mean, is. and. <laughs> All in. How much? He's gone everything. 12, 13, 30 blinds, yeah. Ten. 11, 12, 13, Just committed. Oh. Would you have made that play with it? With it it's a really tough decision there. Pauline, Guys behind him. You You're next. Yeah, the problem is you got six people behind you, and two. Scott raised, <laughs> I mean, under the gun, plus Come one, on. right? I mean, in Barcelona. you know, you were talking about Scott's been, I mean, he is, he is Scott. This he is has that image too, but he's been winning. He's been home. playing tight, and uh, I don't feel I'm like he's opening there with six, seven oh. suited. Um, I might have just called. You know, I, I mean, it's a weird action. spot for Toby, but do you think that a lot of guys, seven. they've probably never played seven. straddles before. They haven't, they may play yeah, a thousand seven. hours of live seven's poker, but only played a couple hours with like double and triple straddles. Yeah, that could be it too. And, uh, you know, but sevens isn't a bad hand to do it with. I said, you know, you could right. shove there with 35 big blinds. It can't be terrible, but. Uh, He's in actually pretty fantastic shape. Yeah, right. especially when he folded a blocker, but I just feel like, uh, I'd be kind of worried, Scott. Scott, I don't feel like Scott's opening super light there, and so, uh, right. so Scott actually would have the best hand. But Seven's a safe. Lewis could really use to get this one through. Not only will it get him back to even and better, oh, it'll give him a big enough out. stack to take on Faraz and G and Scott Bomstein. Oh, and that is just going to dig his hole. Right. It's so much more of a knife when it comes on the turn of the river because you, you, you let yourself have that hope for the time between the flop and the turn when you feel like you could win, you know, and it's just such a dagger. But you're like the biggest sickie in the world. You, you have all, you know, all the weird sweat things, you know, just the extra pain.
Easy call for you. And oh, yeah. Toby That's Lewis right. has gotten up and walked away. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if he's finished. You promise, right? you know, um, me yeah, I mean, uh, well, what did he lose? Yeah. You know, he, he's well, he's lost I'm just kind of upset because I did, a, I did, a, I did. A, I, did a, I have to say, I am a little upset here. I did my best to be first at something, and I only played three hours, and now I feel like you know there's a chance that I'm no longer the victor. Here. <laughs> I think you still made me slightly no, ahead. No, I mean. Uh, I mean, you look, you you, you, you you get a phone call, hey, we're going to play a 2550 game. You bring 40,000. I mean, how, you know, how much can I lose at a 2550? He's sitting here three and a half hours later. What happened, right? I mean, you know you know what's funny is in these, in these games here, every year, no matter how much you think you have or how much you think someone's going to win or lose, it's never enough. Last year, we had a 100K swing. Right, and everybody sits down and they say, 2550, it's not big, it's not a big game. It's a big game. Yeah. It's 2550 with, you know, a 50K swing. Uh, 50K is like losing 10K. Right. That's what you that's have to, to realize. Because when you're playing yeah, 2550, 100, 200, 400, it's really not 2550. I mean, it's essentially what bombs do. And it's funny because yeah. now it goes back to 2550 and it's like it seems so menial, right? right? I mean, you just. What a show. <laughs> um, and by the way, and I this is what we dealt with last year, where every, this sure. the game's just so so big, and so I mean, <laughs> poor true. guy he just comes in here, and I mean, he might not even have known to bring more, right? I mean, it might not even be his fault. Well, the reason I said that I think Toby might be done, uh, I mean, obviously he's got plenty of money and he's a successful player, but I, I think he's a really good manager, and I don't think he's the kind of guy that, you know, he's he's maybe feels a bit rattled by the game and stuff like that. I don't know if he just wants to fire it all off, like like you. You know, yeah. you came in. You're I'm stuck, going firing. You're, like, you're stuck 20k. It doesn't even. It's just gone completely by you. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I flew too far to, to, to quit. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know, it's like I think no, I but know. Uh, I don't know um, what he's thinking about anyway. his uh, all about how he feels on uh, feels here if he's right. feeling. Yeah. I mean, essentially sensitive to the losing on. You know, it's hard to say. I don't know. Right, and both of he the seems like a really great player though, and he's yeah. you know played these things before, and so. Sorry, I've, I've missed yeah, uh, all the action here. I know yeah, Bombstein opened. We're really great commentators talking about yeah, ourselves. Yeah. Bombstein <laughs> opened for three yeah. uh, or so four, and I, I, now it's come back around. And, and then it goes call three bet, and call then the Bombstein right. four bets. So. <laughs> right, so maybe well, he's Bombstein not actually yeah. limped. No, anyway. Bombstein well, raised. Right, but but he's he's actually. Oh, well, he folds the ace queen, which is not what you would you wouldn't expect that right after the few hands we saw. And so did Ido. Wow, he instantly folded the nine. Yeah, and that was after putting in about 10k with them earlier. And you wouldn't really expect either of those two things to happen there. Do you get taxed off this game? If you win in this game, do you get taxed? I don't know. I live abroad. You live? I live abroad, so I don't know. Abroad? But I, I guess so, I guess but, so. I mean, who knew Max Pescatoria was working <laughs> for the <laughs> IRS, you know? <laughs> it's like the last thing <laughs> everybody <laughs> wants to talk about, a poker talk player wants to talk about on I'm TV, is yeah, complicated yeah. tax <laughs> questions. I mean, I mean, yeah, who is he? Oh, man. Everybody won't win as much. Everyone's a winner in Barcelona. Good lifestyle, good money. Look at oh, yeah, this. Yeah, of course. Big money you're winning. Actually, I'm not putting the small blind. I'm gonna the the boy came and Call. 30,000 euros already. Oh. Call 100. Call 100. It feels like I have some, such a big chip out there. I can't just let this go. I'll make it 300. 300? Yeah. Just to build the pot. 300. It's not even a good hand, you know. I'm just building the action for, for people. Sounds good to me. I like to gamble with people that gamble. So I believe Tony has raised it from the I straddle. Don't with it got back around to the straddle. Knit. He made it 300. The the you have to be the better right. Dot net. Knit. <laughs> I love I love when he yeah, does it with do a hand that's just that's marginal. Right. He tells you, I'm just doing it just to spice up the pot. And <laughs> he's really telling the truth. Oh wow. Check 300. 300. Pescatori flopped. Pretty big here. As big as you could hope to flop was 6 3. You're taking all my hundreds. Now I'm going to have to get changed. No, the hundreds are good. How long? One hour and five. So 8 o'clock? Pretty sure you're going to check the turn though. Are you sure? 
check. What do you have, like 3,000 there? 23. Maybe he's just done this because he feels the hand is so big he wants to let Tony G hang himself. Is that possible? Or maybe he feels that, uh, I don't know, that Tony G's not going to fold if he has it. I'm good with a six. And, uh, yeah, exactly. Maybe he feels he like has? he'll let Tony G bluff with the hand a that he would fold if he check raised, like yeah, King yeah. King That's High. Maybe Tony he thinks Tony Close. G is going to bet all in on the turn with that. And so uh, he could call with his six and win. Um, Playing a six yeah, like he tonight. even you said, I was checking it. to make you bet. Yeah. If you pushed in, I would have been forced to fold. I mean, he knows yeah, he's really, going to put the money in. So the question is how to get the money in with the best hand and maybe check call. And now he's gotten a bit unlucky here, Pescatori. And it's been fun. Not uh, really. He is an early exit. We're now yeah, seeing. That was the time to We've seen two One people time. fly from the big game. You haven't even been qualify. cold in the commentary box yet. Does this yeah, mean there's like room? I don't, know. <laughs> I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Oh man. But it was friendly. You see the Biggest way we winners so far. Sergio Edo is flying ahead. Twenty-five thousand euros. Faraz Jaka winning fifteen k, and Scott Bomstein ten thousand. On the other side of the coin, though, Alec Torelli. He's the big loser. Twenty-one thousand to the bad. Who will be next to join the big game table? Find out after the break. The biggest characters, huge pots, and player evictions. The big game has it all. We're bringing you all the action from Casino Barcelona as we head through the night. And Alec Torelli, I know that Nicholas is from Finland and he plays poker. Don't know anything else, but I dare say we'll find out pretty soon. It's such a fun part of the game too, and just uh, going from knowing nothing um, to slowly un unveiling how they think about certain situations. and. Uh, it's it, it stings sometimes too when you when you make a certain play oh. maybe oh. not realizing that uh, in retrospect it was terrible because of how that person plays and you you can never know that in the beginning and uh, it's a really fun part of the game for sure. These guys have to make up their minds in a hurry. I mean I think you know guys like Tony G and stuff. What what they're great at is they will initiate a conversation uh, with anybody just to find out something about him. Oh yeah, you do learn a lot. How they talk, how they respond, how they how yeah. they act, how they carry themselves. You learn a lot about um, them them as a person psychologically. You use that uh, to your advantage, and you know what they're likely to do against you. Tony G, from the 200 straddle position, raised a 400 by Jaka pre-flop. That's how Tony G got this far with the 7-3 offsuit. Now he's facing a 550 bet on this jack high board. Call and it's it's not the best flop to lead into against Tony because so many of those cards. He's not flopping anything between a seven and a queen or a seven and a jack, is he? I mean, well, it's just if he has any piece of it. Right. I mean, he has the worst piece imaginable that someone could have at this board, and he's still called. <laughs> Which means, uh, you know, all of the middle card, 9-6, nine, 9-8, nine, 9-10, nine, nine, all those middle hands are going to call again. And so, so that seems it's like tough to barrel on boards like this, especially right. out of position against Tony. Just and the double barrel seems quite insane. Well, but well now it's it's almost... Uh, Mandatory? Uh, well, it's almost good in the sense that, uh, you know, Faraz picked up a bit of equity now. He could win with the queen. And he could also hope that uh, a lot of those middle cards that are one pair hands will, will go away oh. that uh, that don't have an eight in them. Which is exactly but what it is happened. it is exactly what happened. But uh, I noise you all the time. but I guess you got to do that if you're going in the into the flop like that. <laughs> choose the next victim here. <laughs> right, but I mean, essentially, Tony oh, G oh. has given everyone at this table a oh. bit of a clue, which is that. Uh, you're going to win money from him today by making big hands and just And it holding also, on. from Tony's point of view, he also has to think that it's almost suicide for someone else to double barrel him because he's <laughs> given the appearance like he's never folding. It's true. And uh, so maybe he's reacting to that and he's realizing, well, if they bet twice against me, they almost have to have it because they know I'm not going to fold. Race 1,200. Fold. It, I don't it, know how much I love. Oh, well, he only has 6,600, so I guess he's just going to three bet and get it in here. Who? Uh, and and you th I wonder if Ado's pl planning on 
on calling here. Well, Edo just three bet, so he's certainly not gonna three bet and fold when uh, the gentleman only has six sixty six hundred. Right. So he's gonna three bet, and if the guy goes all in, his plan is is almost certainly to call. Um, which you know, if someone opens the cutoffs can't be a bad idea. They're opening with queen nine and stuff like that. It's hard to know. I don't know about much about the. Uh, excuse me. What's his name? Uh, I'm mad. I'm mad. I don't know yeah. much about uh, how I'm mad plays. I don't know if he's likely to. Uh, wow! Look at that. A thousand and all in. Um, you know, this feels kind of like a tournament play to me. Well, in a way, yeah. But if he check calls the flop, the pot's already uh, the pot's already forty five hundred, and he only has five thousand fifty eight hundred behind. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he could have been having a plan pre-flop where if the flop doesn't come ace, king, or queen, he's just going to go with the hand and, uh, you know, get a C-bet out of his opponent. That's what he did. If you don't pay, if you pay, you see. If you don't pay, you see. But I show you if you show me. Is he trying to talk him off it or talk him into it? I have no idea. I think he's just a little nervous because uh, he's just talking. his opponent's thinking and he feels like his opponent's thinking with a jack. And so, because, uh, I mean, what else could his opponent thinking be, be thinking with, you know? Right. It's hard to put him on two nines. It's probably the only hand that he, he beats, really. Um, wow, that he three Eidos. bets with preflops, so. Ado's tortured. Maybe he thinks he has a bad jack. Fold. It's a good fold. That was a great fold. Tough fold. And he's made some really I interesting and edgy huh? plays so far, Ado. Me too. Uh, and yeah. going quite well for him. This yeah. guy's a player, I guess. I have more than ace queen. More than? Have a pocket. A pocket? Yeah. Good man. I think he wanted him to yeah. fold, and now he's yeah. realizing he yeah. probably wanted him to be caught. I think you're right. Jack. Good start and for I'm at anyway. That is true, I'm yep. Better than you. I think when he call when he takes longer than 15, 10 seconds on the flop, you gotta outrule a jack, right? He's gonna call a little quicker with a jack there. Yeah. So I mean, I'd be worried with two tens too, but after 15 seconds, you gotta think, well, maybe as ace queen, you know, and he's thinking about making a call here. Here comes Scott. Can't blame him. He has eight five suited. Fine hand. <coughs> See, this hand is much better to play in this spot than when the blinds are uh, uh, straddled to 400. When the blinds are straddled to 400, you have to just have a hand for value because so many people are going to – you're going to expect them to jam. But now, you maybe don't expect to get three bet as much. You maybe expect uh, to see more flops and uh, be able to play and uh, have a deceptive hand. You know, you raise under the gun, you could represent big cards <coughs> if they come. Yeah, and with stacks, I wonder if he can even peel the flop here. I guess we'll see what happens as we go around, but it's about – 850 total now? Oh boy. No way! That was pretty. Such a, is that a sick fold? Or is it just because he did it so quick? Well, I guess he just feels that, uh, you know, in a weird way, when players yeah, lose a pot, I feel like they're much less likely to re raise on a bluff because they think that other people are going to think that they are uh, on tilt. On tilt. <laughs> so that makes them have hands a little more for value, you know? And. Uh, and I guess he also, you know, Jock has to worry, be worried if he cold calls. He has to be worried about Scott four betting. He raised another gun. But he must be here so somewhere. then he's going to have to fold He'll out. Come back later. Fold anyway. He's going to be giving away the 850. Um, yeah, uh, give him credit. It's a good fold. Sure. But it is kind of counterintuitive, and I think you're right about that with, with the guys. Eight just it's counterintuitive, but that's how people react well, yeah. uh, a he lot of the times. They, people think that people are going to play looser, and because of that, people play tighter. And so... You know, I would, uh, I, I mean, calling here, I think, is a little too loose. Um, your opponent has to be pretty marginal uh, post-flop for you to be able to overcome calling out of position here. Yeah, and I, I, it, I wonder if it just goes back to this thing about Bombstein maybe being a little bit suspicious. I, I mean, the fact is, is... We've seen all of Ido's cards. They've se the only cards I think they've seen of Ido's is like this King Ten that he showed up with. Right, at some point. and he has played a ton of hands, right? I mean, yeah, he's, he's opened and he's see bet a lot, and a ton. They also have some history too, Scott right. and uh, and Ido here from the Ace Queen. I mean, Ido um, he three bet folded the Ace Queen suited. Then he then he three bet folded the two nines. I mean, these guys 
All they know is this guy's three bet folding all the right. time. Right. And now Scott's picked up quite a bit of uh, of equity here. Got to expect him to be firing here, and he, at the same time, you got to expect Ido to be calling. Good. And his hand is. Seven. I mean, the flush draw is. Uh, I don't want to say it's really well disguised, but in the sense that he has a pair with it too is is really well disguised. I don't think you ever put your oh. opponent on uh, on the eight with diamonds here. Right. Um, so certainly if he hits an eight or five, he expects to win some money. But also if he wins, hits the diamond and uh, perhaps even bluffs, 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 excuse me, bluffs some rivers. I mean, I know he's just call and call, call. But, I mean, it would be quite a... Would it make sense for Bombstein to bluff here? I mean, it's too strong a hand to try and turn into a bluff, isn't it? Well, you beat some hands, too, you know, that check back the flop. You beat uh, Ace-King, which checks the flop. You beat Ace-Jack, uh, King-Jack. Um, and a lot of those hands Ido's going to peel with on the turn. And so, uh, you know, he might just check and then and then think about it here. Bluffing, you're just kind of hoping he folds the 10 or right. two nines or two jacks. It just seems too thin, right? Um, yeah, but... He's done, look what he's done instead. He's done this little min bet thing. I mean, this is something you see every once in a while now. So I would probably raise here. <coughs> I don't know if you could raise here. Certainly you're going to call, but uh, the thing, the reason I wouldn't raise here actually is because... Um, you know, you can never really have, uh, you always have a hand that's marginally strong and never have a hand that's uh, that's super strong. No. And if your opponent is going to three bet you on the river there, it's it uh, becomes kind of a tough spot. Jonathan Conception is now oh. sitting down with 10,000 euros. And I don't know uh, him either. I think, I guess he's Spanish too. I'll tell you what, th this game can handle like 72 hours, can it, with the action we've got? Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the game's going to be here a lot. Uh, if it was allowed, it'd be here longer than uh, longer than we would, for sure. Full. 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 Race three. Every time I big oh, ball. It's not you. Every it's me. <laughs> it's my position. It's not your position. She's oh. raised this. Ball Bombstein has flatted. No, no. <laughs> Full. Yeah, you win some chips. And I'm, I'm kind of putting the money in anyway. I'm not really like, it's not like a good hand or something. So that's why for me, it's not it's easy to play with me. I'm not putting chips in because I have a big hand, you know? I'm just putting it in for everyone to share. I think that you have big hand now. And also in live poker, when people have hands, four or five hands in a row, it, it's drawn out over such a longer period of time that it seems like, God, it's been two hours. He's had a hand every time. <laughs> no, it's only been 50 hands. <laughs> no, no. It looks like that's yeah. my flop. You know, it seems like, so much more uh, I'm afraid dramatic. to even look back because the hand is so strong. Yeah, he basically is saying he doesn't know which one. <laughs> maybe he doesn't know which one of his cards is a spade. <laughs> of course, we have all the information. It's easy for us to sit here and laugh. Well... Now, IMAD was kind of a bogeyman for him. He gave up oh. after IMAD called the flop uh, earlier. Never got to see the hand. Yeah, but, but this is a spot where IMAD might have quite a bit of gut shot straight draws and, and, and sevens. Check. And, uh, of course, this is a terrible turn to bet again. But if the turn comes a queen of spades, you got to think that Tony's going to realize he has quite a bit of equity there, and, and he's going he's gonna to unload the cannon. Bet. I mean, i got to think I might have been correct if he's going to do it on the jack, right? I mean, do you also think about the fact, you know, okay, we know that IMAD's ahead like three or 4,000, so you want to try and bluff him to kind of put that to the test? Guys are very reticent to uh, to play with money that they're ahead, if you know what I mean, to go from winner to loser in a pot. Yeah, especially on TV here. And yeah. um, but Tony needs to empty out here, right? Or does he know it? Is it obvious that he it's needs not, to empty it's out? It's not obvious here okay. because, you know, the turn is, uh, I mean, he's going to probably do it because, you know, he got this far. and uh, But he doesn't like to bluff rivers that often, Tony. He likes to put pressure, you know but on the him. river, he doesn't, he gives people credit when they call him twice. And uh, I guess the the thing that I'm really, uh, it's not, not I don't want to root for Tony here. I don't want to root for either player. I'm not, I'm not saying that, but I'm just mean if the turn was a different card, you got to think that, uh, Tony would have a great 
feeling about unloading the clip on the river here if the turn was a 10 or a, a jack a queen but when it's a jack if, if your opponent has that jack he's just never going to fold and tony's probably worried about that right now and he's going to be sick win, when he win. sees this i think because uh he's he feels one like of the hands he could have got him yeah but what, what you say alec i mean in the way today's game is Players are quick to pick up on this, and it's very exploitable if Tony G does not make big bluffs on rivers. Because, well, no? Yeah. I you mean, know, but uh, in that spot, it's not it, its not a leak of his game. It's just not a great river to bluff, bad, bad you run. know? And the yeah. problem is that uh, his opponent could have a flush. Right. Uh, and if he has that jack, he's just going to call. You know, he's going to call so often there. Jack has been quiet for a minute now, hasn't he? He really has. I'm, I'm actually, I was expecting for him to be, and I think he probably has it in him. His his Five. verbal's quite good. Five hundred. But I guess there's some poker players who have more of a reactionary verbal than an inst than they instigate. If you know what I mean, right? Like they're 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 always looking to counter punch with the verbal. Both. Tony both. just you know, just goes nuts. Tony's both. Yeah. So here we have a double straddle, is that right? That's why the raise is to 500? Right. 1800. Raise 1,800. And it's Tony in the double straddle position. So this Both. is Faraz actually from the first straddle. Right. Great spot for him. Uh, actually has a great hand. It's. Um, what do you think about the size of this re-raise? It's 500 up to 18. Yeah, I mean, you're out of position. You guys are really deep. And, you know, you don't really want your opponent to a uh, good thinking player in position. You don't want him to be peeling with a ton of hands and not know what to do post flop. So you want to make it a size where you really are going to punish him for peeling light. And, uh, you know, if you're going to make it 1500, you're just you're just incentivizing him to call with everything that he opened with. Uh, you also got to think he opened second position. True, it was Tony's big blind, so he might open a little bit lighter. There's so much dead money there, but... Uh, you know, but you really got to bump it up there to get him to uh, to get him to punish to peel with the six seven suited and stuff like that. And this is exactly what's happened. He's put bomb seam to a to a bit of a difficult decision, and I, I guess also gotten bomb steam thinking a little bit about the four bet there. I mean, I think he thinks Faraz probably has it here. I mean, raising that, I don't know. I mean, it's just a weird spot for Faraz to just decide to three bet really light here. Um, he could have seven deuce, of course, that is possible, but, uh, you know, the nine five suited, it's a weird spot for him to just decide to three bet it. Oh my gosh, uh, she's, well, she's gonna crush him. Especially because Jaka has the king of diamonds here, and so right. definitely look for fireworks here. Jaka's gonna come out betting almost certainly. And uh, <laughs> Bombstein's just gonna crush him. You're just wondering, okay, how big can this pot get? Bombstein's got about 15K back. Well, oh. if Bombstein raises, could, could get all the money here. I mean, Faraz flopped a huge hand. I wonder if Jaka could even think about check raising. Are, are this, there's something about the stack sizes? I mean, on these draw types of boards, don't you want to get your chips in first, sort of thing? Uh, well, uh, 3100. Uh, he's gone for the lead out, though. He's 31, gone for the lead. And it's you nearly pot him. size. It is a little big, uh, which makes me think that he actually is more likely to have something. Um, especially leading on this scary of a board where you know your opponent could have. You know, pocket pairs that could have hit a set. Uh, and also, any big card with a diamond, you know, uh, might get there. The thing is, too, is that uh, you got to think pre-flop, people don't call without suited cards that often. So it's going to be hard for, for Bombstein to have, uh, like, king-queen with a diamond. And the question now... I mean, how difficult a spot are you in right now if you're Faraz Jaka, uh, weighing everything up? I mean, you leave, Scott leaves himself with pretty much a pot sized bet. And um, it's kind of weird. What hands is he going to just call the flop with to leave himself? I mean, if he has a big draw, he's probably going to shove, right? Only leaving himself with a pot sized bet. So it's kind of weird. I guess Jaka feels like he checks, he gives himself a chance at a free card. And if he bets, uh, his opponent's only going to call with a better hand. So he just, he might have the best hand right now in his mind, too. You know, if his opponent has ace queen or ace jack. Um, and now Baumstein's thinking, what hands do I get value from here? I mean, if could could Jaka really check call with all in. All in. two queens or, or or whatever? What hands does he check call with? 
Well, Jock has gotten away from it, and probably the fact that it was the King of Diamonds instead of the Ace of Diamonds had something to do with it. But he's he may have gotten away with the Stone Cold minimum there. Right, absolutely. Scott Baumstein takes a good size pot, but after flopping the nuts, he wanted more. Action is heating up here on the table at the big game, so join us for more after the break. Welcome back. The Party Poker Big Game is unique as the only poker game where players are evicted as they play. The threat of being kicked off this table hangs over the players as the second eviction looms. I'm mad with the two sevens, and he's raised here to 350, which is, you're saying his standard was 4x, but anyway. I don't know, maybe he doesn't have a standard, who knows. <laughs> cool. And I have to say, you gotta kinda like this about Concepcion and the fact, cool. right? The fact is, he's sort of balancing it. I mean, he's, he's flatted like cool. three hands, picked up the queens and flatted again. Yeah, and maybe he's doing, you know, he's kind of new to the game. He doesn't really have a read on everybody, and there's there's never anything wrong with uh, with calling with a big hand like that to, to you know, because three betting, the purpose of three betting is to get your opponent to put in more money with a worst hand, but you don't know if he's going to do that because you never played with him. So calling is great. You get to just see a hand in position with, with, a, with a really strong hand. So this is quite a spicy flop here. <laughs> it really is. Especially if the queen, I mean, you, you know, for the, seven, ki for the kids seven, at home, right. you want to root for the queen. I don't yeah. want to root against anybody, but right, uh, right. I a queen like, or a seven. I like the seven yeah, myself. Okay, fine. Well, <laughs> seven on the turn, let's keep everybody in the pot, and then we'll get them a queen on the room. <laughs> seven, yeah. Two people make straights. The guy makes a set. Queen still has the overpair. This is actually... Concepcion, he only has 10K, so you got to feel like he might raise this flop quite a bit here for value. Um, but what about IMAD with the two sevens, a thousand into you? Ah, you gotta go away. You just gotta go away. I mean, you got someone behind you. Faraz led into four people. Yeah, no choice. But uh, Concepcion, you always gotta feel like he's gotta feel like his hand's good here so often, and uh, calling just leaves so many t cards on the turn that you don't know what to do. And if your opponent leads there, you gotta feel like he has enough equity to possibly put all his money in. And if you have two queens. You're ahead of so many of those hands, and so I, I kind of like a raise here in this spot with a short stack like that. That's probably one of the best cards Concepcion could have seen on the turn. Yeah, because I mean you don't want to see uh, you don't want to see a spade certainly. You don't know which cards. Uh, you don't know if he, you know, like even a king. You don't know if he has a king high flush draw if he bets again. It's just so hard to know what to do in so many spots, and and raising your hand looks like a draw too, and you actually have two queens, so uh, you know you might get your opponent to shove with a worse hand quite often. Well, Faraz is like pulling puppets on his string. Wow, He's got everybody to do exactly what he wants. This is a little, little passive here. I'm surprised you didn't bet the turn. When the blank comes and, and, and you get the check, you get the uh, protect your hand a bit here. But I guess he doesn't want to get check raised in this spot. Uh, Faraz, is he going to be tempted by the, the option to bluff? He always got to be tempted when you can't win at showdown. <laughs> but it's 3,500. But the thing he's probably thinking here is, uh, you know, my opponent might think I'm bluffing so often because all the all the draws missed, and so. Yeah, he's done well. I mean, for whatever reason, he decided, Alec. For us, uh, he could have he could have decided his opponent had an ace high flush draw or any kind of thing. I think he could get him off. I mean, now I, I like betting. I mean, now betting the river, it's. It's so much like uh, your opponent either missed a draw or he's or he's gonna check raise all in with a boat or something. It's almost like it's hard to get check called here uh, unless Faraz led with a nine. Um, 
If you can play all night, you have to. Which is possible. You know, it's possibly as a when nine he's going to call here. That's kind of what you're hoping here if you're Conception. <laughs> but he definitely did play at the, uh, uh, I guess the adjective is the most passive way you could you could play the two queens. You definitely can't fault someone for raising the flop and putting in the money, and you can't fault them for betting the turn um, either. But, you know, when you don't have that information on your opponents and you're new to the game and you're kind of getting your feeling, you're getting your bearings, uh, Sometimes you just want to take the line that just is more, a uh, little more secure and get a little more comfortable. Nicholas Astet has yet to move a chip. He hasn't been sitting there that long, but. One thing he's done, yeah, I guess he's been watching this game a little bit because he came in and, and straight away he, he's done the, the, the 100 straddle. He didn't want to feel the, the oh, vengeance yeah. of Tony Oh, here G. we go. Here's the seven deuce we were talking about. 900. Right, 900. And Edo here. Uh, we know he's been three betting with with real hands, but these other guys don't know that, and they, you know, he's been three betting more than he is supposed to be having. He's not supposed to have as many good hands as he's had, and so it seems like he's been three betting more than he should. And now he's doing it with seven deuce. Check it out. And oh my gosh, Baumstein has seven deuce now. And after Baumstein went sailing for the six thousand euros before against Faraz with the seven deuce. There's no way he's gonna he's gonna learn from this mistake, is he? Can he? Nah, you just oh. have to just you just have to keep on going. But that's don't why you? we play seven deuce, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then you got to think that Baumstein and Ido have all this history, and he yeah. knows ido has been three betting more than he should, and this is actually becomes a great spot in the seven deuce, right? I guess it does. I mean, uh, Imad's gonna feel like a no! ping pong. Oh, Scott. Maybe he was scared of Imad in the And middle. remember last time to. Uh, Last time he folded the ace queen here. Remember when he got three bet? He oh. folded the ace queen, and we, we were. Well, this time it's suited, and this time it's Ido who's been three betting a bit, and he's not going anywhere. I, I actually, I, know. I think it was a good fold by Bob Steen, but I just hate the fact that he did it. What yeah. do you think? I mean, it's mature. Well, you hate it because uh, I wanted to see last action. time you did it, yeah. someone had kings, and this time it could have got through, right? Yeah. Last time he had no chance, but this time the like, money's oh, wow. going in. Well, now here you go. He got a straight, th got a big straight draw. Because if you've gotten to the flop, you with got the a seven big deuce. straight draw and a flush draw from uh, from ace queen and right. seven okay. deuce. I mean, it's I mean, one of the best flops you can hope for, right? <laughs> it's just like it's like flopping the joint here when you're in with the seven deuce at this stage. Now he's he's probably going to put it in here. I mean, he's flopped such a big hand and he doesn't have a ton of money. He has eleven thousand. Isn't it's it weird that he bet over the pot, right? Oh Is my it just gosh. me? He bet 3,000 into into two? Um, how much was it pre-flop? It, it was, was only 950, right? So he bet 3,000? I mean, it's just basically, st oh no, he just called? Wow, he seems, I yeah. Yeah, even 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 Ado's shocked that he received a call here from an opponent who uh, is supposed to just shove or fold. No, oh, wow, now, I mean, he just, such a such a huge card for him. Check. I mean, he's certainly going to shove here now, right? I mean, maybe his opponent has two eights. Is he? He's probably thinking to himself, Am I, "Is my opponent going to fold two eights?" I mean, that's what you got to put him on now, right? I mean, wh what do you put him on here? Yeah, that's obviously the problem. And ace high probably folds the flop. Maybe he thinks he has ace high. Wow. That ten thousand. Wow, he just bet 10K. That's well, he's basically put them all in. I mean, this opponent only has 8,000. It's great. It's gutsy stuff by Ido, isn't it? I mean, he look recognizes it as a good, as a good bluffing card, even though. Yeah, and I mean, he has so much uh, equity, anyway. so much hope. I mean, he probably doesn't know what his opponent has. I mean, what types of hand does your opponent check call the flop with? Well, a huge pot. There's over 20,000 in this pot. Still surprised there wasn't a check raise on the on the flop there with such a big hand. Um, I mean, the money's going to go in anyway. I'm just, I'm also surprised about the 3,000 nice. bet there. Nice. The biggest winner is a sliding scale. I'm at Derwish now. I had 19,000, the big winner in the big game. Ado's still doing well, as is Jacka. This is the more serious list, and uh, amazingly, two, okay. of, two of the biggest losers there are still go. winning. <laughs> at least no one took my place at the top. You're still a headliner. That, might, that may be why Toby left. He, he had you counted down. Yeah.
We've got another eviction coming up, and Kara Scott is talking to Yuha Healthy, who's waiting in the wings to get into this big game. A new player coming onto our table is Yuha Helpy. I say new, but he has, of course, played the big game before, but we haven't seen you in a little while, so uh, why come back and play this one? Well, I just decided to fly to Barcelona uh, last night at 2 a.m. I booked my flight because the weather in Finland was so bad. Mm. So that's why I'm here, and I was able to turn the big games fun. We saw you um, playing some pretty incredible hands and some incredible pots as well in the, you know, in the dim past of the big game. What can we expect from you here today? It's a slightly different lineup. I saw Tony C, so he's going to give a lot of action, so I, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of action, maybe a little bit of uh, chatter as well, but that doesn't get on your nerves, does it? Well, usually not, but uh, we'll see. If I, if I lose a lot, then it might, but hopefully not. Okay, well, we are going to see which player you have replaces. Let's get back to the action. We do have an eviction coming up shortly, and I mean, Alec, you getting evicted the first time round, the other players at the table must all be on pins and needles. If you can get kicked out, anybody can. Not Tony G, though, surely. Of course, in prior versions of the big games, the evictions would alternate between player evictions when they would vote for each other to get booted out from the table and online evictions. This time, it's all down to the audience. Call me old school, but I don't think you can ever kick out a big loser in a big game. We've got Tony G opening and Belager for one of the few times just flatting actually in position against the G, but he's yeah, got the Yeah, and he pocket. has a good hand to yeah. do it with here, the, the set mining. Check. Well, we got open-ended straight draw from Tony, and we have top Check. pair here. Check. My mad, so you should see some action here on the flop. And now we've seen a couple times where IMAD is quite content to let others do the betting for him, but they pick up on that sooner or later, don't they? And they, they stop betting when he's in pots, do you think? Certainly when they don't have anything because of his uh, propensity to call quite a bit. But, I mean, uh, you know, there's so much more to consider in this hand than just him being in the pot in isolation because, you know, you're betting into three other op opponents on a board that is very, very connected, <coughs> to say the least, and so you, you, you have to have something. Right. I mean, but isn't Belager just doing his money here, betting into three guys with this hand? Seven, nine, ten on the board? And what happened with Tony? He just checked folded ace eight? Uh, I mean, you'd think it wouldn't be possible. What? Check. And so did Edo. Yeah, but Edo had, it was in the blind. He had a couple people behind him. But Tony, would, after being the razor oh, preflop, flop the straight draw right. and fold, check fold? Seems insane, doesn't it? It does. Not just for Tony, but just in general. I mean, it's a decent flop. I guess a lot of respect given to Belager. I mean, I, I have no idea. Be interesting to see now that uh, 1900. now that IMAD's oh, got this is ambitious here. Right, expecting him to fold. I mean, usually when people call these types of boards, they have uh, some types of pair and straight draw, pair and flush draw combos, and uh, usually those don't go away on the turn. Especially some of them might have picked up even backdoor diamonds with a seven or a ten. I wonder if he's just trying to see if if he can just trying take to build IMAD the pot. Off something. Yeah, I, just build the pot and uh, put him to a tough decision. Yeah, like you said, maybe people don't want to lose the money. Uh, when they're winning a little bit, they just want to lock up the win, and maybe he's picked up on that. That's exactly what happened. There's One no point. way IMAD is ever folding that that hand off of, off a stack of six or seven thousand. No. Is he? No, that's. A and maybe he won't even fold it to another player, but, uh, you know, the image this guy's built up is really tight. He doesn't say anything. He just takes in the information and uh, takes in the money. You did, did you see that, by the way? They they asked the dealer to rabbit hunt, I think. <laughs> he burned and turned a four. That oh. would have come on the river. I can imagine that. <laughs> the imagine? guy's calling with the ten and then uh, <laughs> calls again on the river. I uh, guess uh, what I'm at was thinking is, you know, he doesn't want to call 1,900 and then not know what to do on the river and have to call another five or 6,000. So in a way, betting 1,900 in his mind is really calling 1,900 is really like calling 6,000, right? Yeah. I mean, it, it didn't seem like a terrible fold. It just seemed un unorthodox right, for him, right? Right, right. 
right, would not expect it. him to do it there. I think it's the great thing about Noel. It's like you said, things get so complex, and especially for guys who don't play really deep stack. When you get deep stacked, it, instead of getting happy, you actually get quite scared. I mean, there's nothing scarier than having a monster stack, being ahead a lot, and looking across the table at somebody who covers you. Do you know what I mean? Right, especially in a vulnerable spot there with Queen-10 when you might be ahead, but so many cards hurt you. You don't know what helps you. You might be behind now, and it's just sometimes it's all so overwhelming. The best thing to do is just to fold. So there was an open by, uh, I believe, Scott, Bobstein, right? 300, and then it went call and 1,200. And yeah, we haven't seen anything from Nicholas, but uh, maybe after that hand, and, uh, you know, he might think that the guy's a little frustrated and, uh, you know, it's two eights here. He's going he's gonna to look him up. Right, because he doesn't exactly have the chips to kind of set mine here, does he? Although he's in position. Oh, he's got to play his hand a little bit for value. He's kind of have to. He kind of has to have a plan where it's like, you know, no ace, no king, no queen. I'm going to go with it type of thing. Otherwise, you just don't have the value to set mine there. I wonder if he thinks oh. that Imad turns his hand a little bit face up after the flop. Uh, right, and there's some room to outplay him here. Like right now, he might know that Imad has something like queens or kings or, or or basically kings or queens or maybe king jack. Check. Uh, or your plan could just be to hit an eight. <laughs> right. I mean, it's such a good plan, isn't it, actually? <laughs> Why don't you ever have that plan? <laughs> <laughs> it's not always successful, needless to say. Now, now your question goes from, you know, am I bluffing to get him to fold kings or queens to, to how can I win more money here? It's amazing how it's just uh, your whole strategy in the hand changes just, but it's just on the card. It is. I do wonder whether he was betting that turn or not. I guess if it's a seven, you, you probably think he's going to unload three barrels trying to get him to fold two queens, right? 19, and now he's probably going to bet really small to keep him in the pot there with two queens or something like that. You know, you, what you did do, he bet a little bit like half pot. You want to you wanna leave, leave him some rope there and make it easy for him to call. Also, you, he only has, another thing important to note, he only has 4,300 behind. So if he bets any bigger than that. Um, he, right, Derwish knows he can't pass. Or Yeah, exactly. He knows it's kind of committing all the stack. And this way, maybe he thinks that he could call and then, uh, I'm at it, I mean, thinks he could call and then have a decision left on the river. It's kind of a little bit more enticing to call there. Uh, I met something stuff why I folded the last one. I don't want to be doing too much folding. <laughs> it's hard to fold a big hand and to get another one and then let it go again because, you know, in your mind, you already let it go. And uh, oh. you could be looked at like you're getting picked on, you know, even though sometimes you're not. Right. And I wonder how committed IMAT is to this river because he obviously thought about it. He knows the dynamics here that Aztec can shove. And, I mean, to his credit, uh, you know, if the turn wasn't a seven... If the turn wasn't an eight and it was a seven, you know, he might be making the right call here. Right, so it's could hard be to sitting know. Here, right, 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 exactly. He could be making the great call. It's going to be such a frustrating uh, thing to see if he does call. He does fold. To give it's him credit. Good pass. It is a good pass. And uh, he's got to be a little frustrated now, <clears throat> especially just letting a few hands go back to back like that. And. Uh, not even knowing if he's getting picked on or not, and then seeing the results later, maybe too, seeing that he got bluffed off a of one and got sucked out on the other, it's 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 frustrating for anybody. It's no fun, but these are the dangers of these big cash games, and and uh, I I do believe there's going to be another eviction soon. It's been a couple hours. Have a look at the at the leaderboard. Here's the scores, Alec. I'm at now the big winner, right. only 12,000, a little bit ahead of Sergio, but it's actually quite tight. It is. It's really uh, the top four winners are all within basically, to put it into the poker terms, uh, a raise pre-flop and a bet on the flop. It's all it is, is between these guys here. Big news, though. Look at the stacks. There's over 100K on that table, and there could be more. Let's go down to Kara Scott for the next eviction.
We're about halfway through this session of the party poker big game, and that means it's time for the second elimination. Now, the online viewers have been voting for the players that they want to see stay at the table, which means that the player with the fewest votes has to leave in order to make some room for some fresh blood. And I can now tell you that the player to be evicted this time is EMAD. Sorry, I'm afraid that's going to be the end of your session here. So for Ivan Derwish, he has been evicted from the big game. Not the worst news, uh, because he is winning about 12,000 here, but I'm sure, uh, you can see by his face, that he wanted to keep on playing. Nobody, nobody wants to go, right? No. I mean, you, you get a chance at it, you come this far, and it's, yeah, nobody wants to go. <laughs> Emad was our second eviction, but he doesn't leave the table down. Uh, you leave with a bit of a profit as well. Yeah. Tell me about your experience here. It's a very good experience. Uh, the table was uh, very sympathetical and uh, the play was very good. Uh, I am not a professional, I'm a businessman, and it was a very good experience for me to play with some best professional in uh, poker. And I'm not very happy to be the victim, but I hope that I can come back tonight to continue to play with them. We'll keep our eye out for you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next time, as night falls in Barcelona, the big game continues its 12-hour run.